Hey guys, so I'm going to tell you the real honest truth of where I am with Magic the Gathering. I have a daughter. Uh, she is obviously the most important thing to me right now. And spending more time with my family. So if actually I'm in a position where I have enough money to save up to just enjoy time with the family. I will not be opening another game store. That was what I expected to do. I still have a bunch of inventory. I still have probably a million dollars of magic cards that I either will put in storage and just sit on. Uh, the majority of the valuable cards are already in chase and I don't take them out unless you know I go to chase. And I'm not interested in buying any more magic collections. Um, I prob we don't, you know, my significant other doesn't really play Matt. She likes anime. So there, there is, and we have bought a lot of Weiss cards. Uh, we will buy cases of Sakura. Actually, we bought three cases of it because he likes Sakura card caps of Sakura. It's kind of a fun card set to open, a very small set. But for Magic, I really wanted to kind of go over why I'm taking this stance and uh, is this unique to me or is this something that other people are also considering? Well, uh, first and foremost, um, let's talk a lot about a, a key situation, uh, Sweet Baby Inc. Since Sweet Baby Inc. got involved in Magic the Gathering, I just haven't really uh, liked it as much. You know, Magic for me, when I played it, it was a game for nerds. It was a game that you played because you were an outcast. It wasn't supposed to be this popular game that uh, everyone loves. And, you know, it was supposed to be for the nerds. Now, that sounds like I'm excluding people, but uh, I'm not. Um, you know, it's okay to have a, a fun game where people don't necessarily, not everyone, it's not for everybody, right? As Mero would say over and over again, it's not for everybody, it's not for everybody. Sweet Baby Inc. has made the game untenable for me to play. I still play ED8s once in a while, but those are cards that were invented before Sweet Baby Inc. got involved. Uh, the fact that they had to remove... Um, it's a very strange thing to have a consulting agency, and the point of this consulting agency is to, quote, diversify your products and whatnot, and all they do is destroy companies. Uh, and that's what Sweet Baby Inc. is in a nutshell. All they've ever done is destroy companies. And I don't think that... I think their involvement with uh, Magic the Gathering, uh, their involvement with uh, the game, is going to destroy the game. Uh, and I don't think Wizard of the Coast is not going to involve them in the game. I think you have a scenario where it is very very difficult to imagine how they can be a positive for the game when they've been such a massive negative for every other game they touched. Uh, every other game they touched is either not using them anymore or they've tanked the game. From Star Wars to, I mean, I'm, I'll read you the list. And then why would Magic the Gathering be any different? So when they spend, when they send, uh, spend this type of money, um, let, let's read C Sweet Baby Inc. is a Canadian narrative development and consultant studio founded by former Ubisoft developers, including Kim Belair. Let's read it. The company consults on game narratives during development and promotes gender and racial diversity in development teams. In the 2022, the studio developed Lost Your Marbles for the Playdate handle handheld console. Uh, the studio joined After Love EP. Uh, they did Alan Wake 2, Remedy Entertainment, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, Flintlock, these scene. Like, it's really obvious. Marvel, Spider-Man 2. As of April 2024, Sweet Baby Inc. has 16 employees. In October 2023, Sweet Baby attracted negative attention. Theories about the studio, including what it was directed or indirectly controlled by investment company BlackRock that forced Remedy to remake Alan Wake's 2. Sweet Baby employees faced harassment and attempted doxing in response to the backlash, 
with attention drawn towards the company and employees by high-profile social media accounts, including Elon Musk, Matt Walsh. Others who faced harassment included Kotaku's reporter who first highlighted the backlash. So the games that they worked on, like Neo Cab, Dota Underlord, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, obviously that's Wizards of the Coast, Sable, Lost Your Marbles, Golf from Knights, God of War, Ragnarok, Recommendation Dog, Real Steel, Shadow Gambit, The Cursed Crew, Goodbye Volcanic High, Quantum Phantom Basketball, uh, Alan Wake 2. Where's the Star Wars one? I know they worked on Star Wars somewhere. Um, Suicide Squad, that one went really, really poor. Killed the Justice League. They, everything they worked on has gone to garbage. So why would Magic the Gathering not be the same? So instead of spending its money on hiring the best people they can find, they're going to hire an outside consultant to consult them on diversity. This, again, is probably not a good strategy long term, and I really don't think um, it's a good idea. I think uh, in the long term of things, you have a issue where if this is where the money is being spent to make your game quote better, then the money is going to dry up really quickly. Sweet Baby Inc. is definitely not an organization that I would ever want my company to be involved with or pay or anything like that. It, it just, you, you, you think about it from the stance that, hey, this is a company that promotes hatred. I mean, people don't like the company. The gamers don't like the company. And then who is your audience? Your audience is the gamers. So what what is what's exactly happening here? Like, you know, like I, I don't get why Wizard of Coast needs to hire this company. And every company that has hired this company has gone down and, and down and down. So that's why I cannot buy no more of this card game. Um, I will be looking to actively sell the card game probably on this YouTube channel for really good prices soon when uh, I'm still I'm still working full time uh, with the child. I have decided to on the 25th of October take a at least until the end of the year. So two and a half months off. I'll probably be going to conventions, maybe going to shops, maybe going to different buy lists and, and trying to move as much of the collections as I can get. Like, seriously try to move the collection. Um, now, if I hold a collection, I hold a collection. It is what it is. Like, if it has to move to storage because no one wants to buy it, then that's that's what it has to go, right? And maybe in 10, 15 years, the situation will be better. But for the time being, at least, this is very disturbing stuff. Um, when I mean, like, it's very disturbing, I mean, I don't think the long-term Magic the Gathering is a good... I think this is very bad for Magic the Gathering's long-term... I think it is going to kill the game because it's killed other games before. Anyway, bye guys.